Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Kraken makes historic Avro Aero discovery, Virgin Orbit plans aggressive flight schedule for 2020, and California no pot delivery by drone. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Oldham. It's September 19th, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Kraken Sonar Systems, working with OEX Recovery Group, has discovered a long-sought free-flight Avro Aero model on the floor of Lake Ontario. The sonar images were captured using Kraken's Aquapix Synthetic Aperture Sonar and revealed to media and project supporters. The sonar and underwater camera images showcase a free-flight Avro Aero model that was launched over Lake Ontario in the 1950s as part of the Avro Aero design test program. It has been a very exciting few weeks after a short break to conduct vehicle maintenance and refresh our team. Last week, we headed back out onto the lake, said David Shea, Kraken's VP of Engineering. The plan was to follow the trajectory of our recently discovered Nike booster rockets, and we prioritized our search grid to focus along the same trajectory. The group decided to conduct a search immediately beyond the location of our previous booster rocket. We had a very productive survey day and were rewarded with a fantastic discovery, an Avro Aero model and two more Nike boosters. Any of the free flight test models that are eventually recovered will be housed at the Canada Aviation and Space Museum in Ottawa and the National Air Force Museum of Canada in Trenton, Ontario. The new CEO of Virgin Orbit, which was spun off from Virgin Galactic to capture a share of the small satellite launch market, says the company will carry out two missions per month in 2020 despite a delay in the initial flight of the company's launcher. Dan Hart was promoted from company president to CEO in June. Hart recently said that he had made a few changes in the test program, which pushed the initial flight of the launcher one into early next year. He said that the company plans three test flights of Launcher One before moving to commercial operations. That gives us plenty of ramp up time to get to the 24 level in 2020, Hart said during the panel discussion. Hart said that after the initial flight test program, commercial operations will come quickly, with the launch rate doubling in 2019 and doubling again in 2020, reaching a rate of 24 launches in that year. The first Launcher 1 rocket was completed a few weeks ago, Hart said. It will be used for tanking test and stage firings in Mojave, California. Launcher 1 will be deployed from under the wing of a modified Boeing 747 dubbed Cosmic Girl, making operations possible from multiple space ports. After the break, California no pot delivery by drone. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Progressive Aerodyne C-Ray Adventure offers Rotax 912 power, a basic instrument panel, and radios. Fly it away for under $120,000. Visit C-Ray.com for more details. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aerol TV, the new AMA Drone Report, our website or a podcast, just email the news dash spy at earl newsnet This is so California. The California Bureau of Cannabis Control has shot down the idea of delivering pot using drones in the state. The Bureau released an initial study that outlined emergency regulations being formulated ahead of January 1st when the sale of marijuana will be allowed with proper retail licensing 
for recreational use, but the Bureau was very clear that only trailers or commercial vehicles can be used. Transportation may not be done by aircraft, watercraft, rail, drones, human-powered vehicles, or unmanned vehicles, the Bureau said in its study release. FAA spokesman Ian Greger told the paper that the agency is not aware of consultations that took place between the California Bureau of Cannabis Control and the FAA. The Bureau will allow home delivery, but only by commercial vehicles. The delivery person may not carry more than a specified amount of product at any time, and it must not be in clear view from outside the vehicle. Employees must also log their deliveries and will be tracked by GPS. And according to the study, delivery employees may not consume cannabis during delivery. The bottom line is that there will not be pot drums buzzing over California to make deliveries to users' homes. What a bummer. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. October 6th through 8th is the Big Splash Seaplanes on Lake Hickory in Lake Hickory, North Carolina. Join the fun watching seaplanes take off and land on Lake Hickory. Get a close look at the planes, meet the pilots, explore a world-class aviation museum, watch the planes fly over downtown Hickory, and ride the Lake Hickory Adventures dinner yacht. Food and festivities will be available at the Wittenberg Access Area and at the Hickory Regional Airport. October 10th through 12th is the NBAA base in Las Vegas, Nevada. Join 27,000 industry professionals for the three most important days of business aviation in the year. The NBAA Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition will be bringing together current and prospective aircraft owners, manufacturers, and customers into one meeting place to get critical work accomplished. November 2nd through 4th is the Deland Sport Aviation Showcase in Deland, Florida. The 2017 Sport Aviation Showcase will offer people an opportunity to become familiar with the Deland Airport and the community of Deland, as well as the sport aviation wares on display. They will welcome up to 40 indoor and 40 outdoor exhibitors. In addition, forum and workshop facilities are also being established with full services as well as the food vendor area. After these messages, National Aviation Hall of Fame leader resigns. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. So much news coming out of the aviation industry. We're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Ron Kaplan informed the National Aviation Hall of Fame Board of Trustees of his resignation from the organization effective as of July 31st, 2017, citing philosophical differences with the NHAF executive leadership. He had served the congressionally chartered nonprofit in various capacities since being recruited onto the staff in 1998, including four years as executive director. Kaplan leaves his present position of enshrinement and outreach director to expand his aviation and media consulting service. Maryland Governor Larry Hogan has directed State Attorney General Brian Frosch to file a lawsuit against FAA Administrator Michael Huerta in an effort to change next-gen flight patterns for arrivals and departures from Baltimore, Washington, Third Good Marshall, International Airport and Ronald Reagan National Airport in nearby Arlington, Virginia. The FAA instituted the new flight patterns in 2014. Johns Hopkins researchers have set a new delivery distance record for medical drones successfully transporting human blood samples across 161 miles of Arizona desert. 
Throughout the three-hour flight, the onboard payload system maintained temperature control, ensuring the samples were viable for laboratory analysis after landing. The achievement adds to evidence that unmanned aircraft can be an effective, safe, and timely way to quickly transport medical samples from remote sites to laboratories. The Court of Justice of the European Union has ruled against Ryanair in the case of Aircrew against Ryanair and its temporary staff agency, Crewlink. The decision brings a definitive end to Ryanair's fiction of considering a Ryanair plane as Irish territory with Irish employees subject to Irish jurisdiction. This claim has incorrectly designated Irish courts having jurisdiction over thousands of pilots and cabin crew and has deprived many of them from access to legal help at the place where they actually work. The Black Sheep have returned. The 8th Fighter Squadron was reactivated at Holloman Air Force Base, New Mexico, August 4th, 2017, six years after its last inactivation. Lieutenant Colonel Mark Sletton, the 8th FS commander, took command of the 8th FS at an activation ceremony led by Colonel James Keene, the 54th Fighter Group Commander. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's get back to the rest of the news. After seven years producing high-quality camera accessories, in a flight cam has ventured into the headset market with the in-flight mic. The in-flight mic is an aviation microphone that can be attached to a number of active noise-canceling headsets from the consumer electronics market, creating a high-quality ANR headset at a very affordable price. For example, the Bose QC35, this Bose top-of-the-line consumer headset, retails for $329.95. Add the in-flight mic for $275, creating a top-of-the-line A&R headset for $604.95. The new in-flight mic is made up of a high-quality electric aviation microphone that also contains circuitry to convert the aircraft audio output into line-level audio that any consumer headset will accept. Using 3M dual lock, the in-flight mic will attach to almost any headset on the market. Never again will you be bound by the high-cost aviation headsets simply because they're made for aviation. The in-flight mic is backed by an unconditional lifetime warranty. They will replace your in-flight mic even if the damage is a result of abuse. Well, that's our program for today. Remember, Airborne Unlimited stream daily Monday through Friday for additional breaking news, bulletins for important stories fall outside our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. And do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aerodashnews.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow.